Uh, so my name is Kuba. Um, I work in Intel in Poland, Gdańsk. Uh, it's 6 a.m. in the morning um, my time, so I will keep my voice a little bit down because everybody's asleep. Uh, so I'll be talking a bit about uh, machine learning and a bit about uh, how uh, uh, how a human moves a mouse, and I will show you a simple uh, simple project that I did for my studies, uh, where I tried to implement some system uh, for for uh, exactly for moving a mouse like a human. Uh, so I have no previous I, I had no previous experience in uh, machine learning, uh, so this my this was my first shot. Um, okay, so let's start. I will show my screen. Yes, so uh, this is application. This is not my application, uh, the first thing to say. Um, so you, uh, most of you probably are familiar with uh, the reCAPTCHA. So in the world of internet, uh, there are many forms in social media, uh, when you set up a social media account or something like that. <clears throat> and um, the administrators of this website use uh, the mechanism from Google called reCAPTCHA to uh, basically to tell the bots and humans apart, so to filter out bots. Uh, if you are a human and you click on a uh, fill of uh, fill this form and you click uh, on on the on this form and then you click on another robot, then uh, it should uh, let you in. But if you're a bot, and uh, this uh, this should prevent you from from clicking the submit. Uh, apart from this clicking mechanism, there are also uh, an upgraded version of this reCAPTCHA, uh, which basically uh, uh, makes an assumption on based on uh, your uh, activity on the website. So if you are moving, uh, how you are moving uh, your mouse through, through the website, how you are clicking the buttons, and then it gives you some score. Uh, the highest score, the closer uh, score to, to one, it means the more human, the more human you are. Uh, when the score is less than a half, it means that probably you are a bot. Uh, so this was the motivation for uh, for my project. Uh, so uh, I uh, was reading uh, quite a bit about that, and it turned out that uh, underneath uh, there sits uh, some uh, artificial intelligence mechanism that uh, that makes uh, these computations and these assumptions. So for me, it seems natural to use also AI to try to trick uh, this mechanism uh, yeah, and build some bots to, uh, to, to move to a site without, um, without noticing of this algorithm. Uh, so I was, using, uh, I was uh, searching for a tool uh, to that and I decided to use the TensorFlow uh, for JavaScript. Uh, some of you may be familiar with TensorFlow. Uh, Feel free to check out this this amazing website. There are many demos inside. You can use AI directly uh, directly here. You can play Pac-Man with your thumbs, um, telling it uh, where to go. Uh, okay, so I used TensorFlow.js and I built a simple website that you can see here. <clears throat> Don't worry about this. Lots of buttons here. Uh, this was all, only my playground. Uh, the important thing that you uh, that is worth to mention here, uh, you can see the two checkboxes on the left and on the right on uh, on this uh, gray box, uh, and this playground is uh, designed to I designed it to uh, record um, mouse movement while um, so so it, the recording starts when I click the A checkbox and it ends uh, when I click the B uh, the B checkbox. So Let's see how it works. So when I click A and I move to B, I can replay. So you can see how my hand moved uh, between those checkboxes. So uh, obviously for a machine, if you tell move from point A to point B, it will be a straight line in a fraction of a second. Uh, for human, it's a bit different. Uh, you use a mouse, you have a few muscles, which are not perfect. Uh, this this pattern is obviously not a straight line. Uh, and also, uh, you you will see some patterns. So I'll collect some uh, some samples, and I will present you what, what pattern I, I found. Yeah, so here I, I think uh, it would be uh, the best example. So what you can see here, 
Uh, so the, the first part is uh, that the points are quite sparse. So because uh, I'm nonchalantly moving from point A to point B because it's uh, fair in fair distance uh, from the point A. Uh, then in the, let's say, two thirds of the movement, um, there's some, uh, uh, some um, uh, concatenation of uh, uh, concentration of uh, of the points because I was uh, probably I was uh, pausing a bit to check where I am where am I uh, and how far I am uh, still I am still to point B uh, and then my movement was very very precise because uh, I was moving very very close to point B and I wanted to hit exactly the point B uh, so this is the first pattern this the concentration of points in in um, in some places of uh, throughout the movement and especially uh, at the end. Uh, the first uh, pattern that I saw is that uh, at the first half of the part of the movement, uh, the curvature of this line is uh, very small. So it's basically a straight line. But when I was moving close to point B, the curvature is uh, uh, was getting bigger. Uh, so these are the two patterns that I wanted to um, to see uh, in the results of the um, uh, AI training. Uh, okay, so once you have collected the samples uh, using the TensorFlow.js, uh, you can train a model. Uh, this the TensorFlow.js is embedded in, exactly in the in the web page, uh, and also there is a small library TensorFlow for visualization which. Uh, um, which creates an additional uh, overlay for your website, which you can, um, where you can see all the samples that you that you collected here on the right. The model summary. Uh, here I use the same very simple two-layer, um, uh, two two-layer um, uh, scheme with uh, sigmoid um, activation function. Of course, you can play around with that and uh, make it a little bit more complicated, so the result will be better. But this is only a simple, uh, simple scheme. Uh, and here you will see the uh, training results, which obviously should go uh, as close to zero as possible. And uh, after the results, the, you have the results. You can test your your machine learning model. Um, so. The, this the, this is a very small subset of um, a very small subset of uh, of samples. So I uh, f for the machine learning to uh, to be trained on. So I uh, load a pre-trained model uh, to show you how it worked because it will take too much time to collect uh, so many samples. And this is a great feature of the, about TensorFlow that you can simply load the pre-trained model and and wait. Uh, yeah, so the model is loaded. So these these checkboxes are generated at some random height, and I trained them uh, after collecting. Uh, very many samples, so it was uh, about 200 or so, and you can see that this generate that, that this pattern generated actually moves uh, from point A to point B, and if if you look closely, you can clearly see at least one of the patterns that I showed you uh, that the concentration of points uh, near point B uh, uh, is getting uh, the concentration is getting higher and higher as we close uh, as, uh, as we move closer to point B. Um, yeah, and this is this is generated with machine learning. So about now about the design, uh, how these points are calculated. So my thought was that uh, let's say that uh, the only knowledge that I have uh, when I'm starting uh, is that my current point is point A. So I my mouse is uh, clicking on point A, and I know the goal. The, my goal is point B. So this is the, the, the coordination of these two points, the current and the goal, uh, is the entry to, uh, to my model. And the output, what I, wanna, uh, what I want to uh, receive in the output, is the next point in the movement. So when the next point is calculated, I move the current point to the next point, 
and repeat the whole process. So my current point is now here, I have the goal B, and I calculated the next point. And this works like this. Um, yeah, I can show you um, a little bit more complicated example, but uh, the results are not great. Uh, I think it's promising, but it requires uh, a little bit more work on that. Uh, so if you have some comments, let me know on the Slack. We can also talk uh, offline after the meeting. Oops. Yeah, once again, my page crashed. Yeah, so uh, these two points are generated randomly inside the box, and you can obviously see that uh, this uh, the output is not very good. Uh, at least it's going in the correct direction. Uh, so my thought, my thought is that um, the model that I used is very is too simple uh, for this kind of problem uh, because it's uh, you know it's not um, in one dimension in two dimensions and uh, what I use is all, only a two layer um, a two layer uh, neural network so I think it's uh, if I used a, probably a different uh, activation function and uh, um, maybe a more complicated uh, neural network uh, design and the result will be better uh, I was playing around with uh, with some of the activation functions and I uh, and I received uh, different different results, but I don't want to present you. Uh, the intention of this presentation is just to give an idea, uh, maybe open a discussion. Uh, yeah, so let me know uh, what you th what you think. Yeah, basically, and that's all from me. Let me know your uh, your questions in Slack.